So, guys, a short introduction of the teams. We are having EU1 versus EU2 battle once again. Same like last week, EU1 versus EU2. EU1 represented by the Kittens, Team Kittens, and EU2 by Lamalan. Let me tell you a little bit, with, uh, a little bit about Lamalan. So, they are Turkish and Spanish lineup. They have 10 Turkish players, five, five people from Spain. They are representing Legendarian and Guardia Templaria houses. And basically, they play quite a long. They play since first season. And uh, definitely, they are joining the tournament to have some fun with friends and, you know, compete. But they are, because they are Lamas, they are actually aiming to achieve the first place. So definitely, we shall see how it will end up for them. On the Kittens, on the other end, they are EU1 team, as said earlier. They are from Russia and Ukraine. They are from Rose, Legion and Forbidden Empire houses. And they try to participate in all the major tour tournaments. So they have uh, quite a lot of experience, I guess. So uh, especially that they are playing even from open beta. So similar from the time perspective, maybe even a little bit longer. They are aiming for first place because they can and they will do that. So they are very confident about their uh, their tactics and their playstyle. About the playstyle, Kittens, they are basically 15 different party leaders and right leaders in one team trying to play the game and not get into fight among themselves. So, interesting answer to the question. On the Lama land, on the other end, they are representing a lot of individual talents and they basically, as they are Lamas, they spit on everyone, right? So, we will see if this will... Uh, give them some range damage buff. Uh, when it comes to some history, uh, Lama Land biggest achievement, they have defended CC in season 3 and 4. Uh, for the Kittens team, last season they have taken Reginopolis from the guys who won the season. So definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of um, achievements on both ends. And CB, what else can you tell us about the teams? Um, yeah, quite a bit. Um, I've played quite a few players. Uh, I think you as well from uh, the Lamaland team. Uh, one of them is Brave Hakan. He is very impressive with his unit kills. Um, he averages four, 143 units uh, in his games, and that's that's a lot. If you play sieges, you know that's a lot, um, especially on average. Um, on the kitten side, we got Ramses with an average troop skill of 114, and you can see a gap there. It's pretty big. Um, but I expect their players to be really good and to be able to make up for that. Um, on the hero kills, we got for Lemonland the Luz, who is the highest KDA with 5.4. And on Kitten side, we got Komata. I hope he's playing today as well. I'll check in a bit. Uh, he got 8.3 kills on average per game, which is also quite a bit. Um, other players to look out for are for Lemonland Luan Luan Kur. I hope we are saying that name right. Um, but I'm not, and he's also in the game today, so he's one player to look out for. Um, they have players with levels above 4,000. Can you imagine having a level above 4,000? You need to play from season one if you want to get there, especially right now, or play for quite a few more seasons. Um, so yeah, they've got really good players, like you said before, they've been playing for a long time, and their individual skill is really high. Um, both p teams are looking forward to using Berserkers as well. Uh, might be another interesting unit, like you said, with some small corridors on this map um, that people, that teams might take use of. And about uh, the weapons, we know their team uh, captains like to use the short sword. Um, and he's got actually a pretty good tip for you. Um, if you have the Thunderstruck ability, right, the big knockdown ability for, for the short sword, just make sure you use it for the team and try not to use it too much in the 1v1s. And I can agree with that. Like dropping down the walls or pikes, it's such a big advantage once you really start pushing. And um, yeah, great tip. And for the poleaxe, just try to hit your ultimate. Um, yeah, makes sense, right? It's the lockdown. 
Um, so for Lamaland, let's see if they bring out the pole act. We haven't seen it too much play being played last week. So um, look forward to seeing another weapon in for both teams. So, uh, talking once more about the players and their equipment, seems like this is exactly the same what they have used, right? Uh, no changes. Two short sword, one uh, musket on the team kitten attacking side, and two medium armors, so two muskets, uh, and everyone else on heavy armor. On the Lamaland side, we have Polax and Glaive, probably for some damage buffs and for securing the, the kills, and then a lot more mauls will be able to throw enemies away from the walls. So Stevie, would you like to talk about the units? Yeah, for um, the attackers, for kittens, I'm oh, sorry, for um, Lamaland, I'm seeing, oh, sorry, yeah, kittens, for the attackers, I'm seeing the same units. And for Lamaland, I think they made some changes. They might actually few less armigers for now, wonder if they change it up. And they also have fewer berserkers in their lineup currently. So it looks like they made some changes. They have more Jeffs now, currently three Jeffs in there. And one, two, three Berserkers only, and just just the one Armiger, or no, two, two Armigers right now. And we see no cap at all for, um, for the Kittens team, which is interesting. Yeah, and I would like to point out also, like, if you observe the units closely, pretty much everyone had two times Pike units. So it seems like if you would odd add up all the pikes the team kittens bring to the attack you could you know move to the moon or, or whatever right the, the length of the pikes combined is, is amazing so we'll see if this will be something that will bring them the victory here because uh, i would say this is non-standard play the pikes units have their advantages but they have also a lot of dis disadvantages maybe they expected heavy cavalry usage from lama land on the defender's side but uh, yeah this might be something that we'll have to look and right now fortunately everyone have been coming to the game properly, no one disconnected, so we can focus on the game. Opening Trebuch, already cleaning up some artillery, very interesting use of that. I mean, later on in the later stages of the game, the trebuchets are not that useful because there is a lot of uh, tight uh, cover uh, cover um, houses. So right now using it, it might be not that bad idea. We see a lot of artillery fire across the board from left to right seems like for now the uh, defenders are doing quite good not that many artillery left uh, lost sorry yeah there's still a lot at the main gate we're seeing some units getting killed and the veteran ram is already gone oh no it's still it's not even pushed okay so some unit losses not too many still all heroes alive and they seem to have a hard time hitting the cannons on the right side they are pretty hard to get normally even yep and the small gate is not contested at all. As you can see, no one from attackers or defenders is even there. So right now, it seems like the team kit and is pushing focus on the right side of the map. They are trying to push both of these towers forward. They are destroying the artillery as much as they can with everything. And they were successfully doing so. Both cannons over here are gone. Also, this cannon is gone. The middle cannon is gone on the one left over here. Ah. Well, it's gone as well, so no more cannons who can attack those two towers. Yeah, the two cannons on the left side of the map uh, were not used at all up till now. So interestingly, um, they didn't. They chose not to use those. Apparently, they think the right side is way more important. But no more cannons there. Uh, still, all heroes alive still as well. And I think that one siege tower on the left might go down, but the others will reach as there is no... Well, they are shooting with ranged on the right far uh, tower. So we cannot see how low it is, I think, but it's burning a lot, so maybe it's enough to take that one down. Yeah, and they are trying to counter it with the cannon fire, as you can see, but on that range, cannons are not that accurate, unfortunately. So this turret, uh, this tower might not reach. We'll see very shortly. I don't... I cannot... Ah, yeah, HP is here. Look at that. It's like 5% or even less. They're trying their best, but it will arrive with like one or two. Uh, that's unfortunate. So Team Kitten, they achieved what they wanted to do. Only one trebuchet left, destroyed all the cannons. Two towers they planned to push are here. The other tower is destroyed. Uh, I mean, they didn't cover it too much. So that's why it was destroyed. But yeah, they will be right now preparing for the push. 
look at the um, placement of the um, team kitten. They are very heavily moving towards one side. They are not opening anything else. They are not pushing anything else. They will have only two entry points plus, of course, the ladders if you need. So it seems like they will rely on their brute force to push one side. They don't want to play any backstab. They don't want to play any, you know, um, take a blast from behind, go through the small gate with one person. Full force is right here, as you can see, yeah. everyone. General, just before uh, we see uh, Kittens moving up, uh, Kittens is not carrying any ranged units and Lama Land has, so this might be uh, an advantage for Lama Land for now, at least, as we see uh, quite a few units dropping. Um, oh, sorry, that's advantage for Kittens, as we see quite a few units dropping from Lama Land. Mm -hmm. And Zikali and Militia goes in already, burning down those uh, shield balls. Yeah, so Zikali and Militia can be crucial if you have 15 people stacked in one time. The damage will multiply heavily, so by the time they reach the main cap, they can be very, very damaged. Look at the amount of fire that is here. That's amazing damage that they are dealing. So if they will be able to withstand and rotate fast enough from the Lama Land, this push can, you know, just burn down pretty much. Advances moving in, trying to clear out these stairs. So the Kalyan Militia very nicely pushed over and the Trebuchet covering the other flanks. So very nicely played from the Team Kitten. Even though a lot of their units have died. As you can see, there is a lot of bodies around, burned out, much of those. But then, still a lot of bodies are in front. We can see Azabs coming in to stop the advance. We can see some pikes charging in, these are halibards. So they are trying to stop them as much as they can. Another trebuchet coming in, we'll see if this will hit anything. Kittens has already lost three people on the attack. Uh, they are coming back right now with new units, but uh, Lama Land at the same time has lost more units on that staircase and they are coming in with new units right now. They are still bringing a lot of Sicalian militia. And yes. Kittens are pushing to the left side slowly. We can see Lone Lone Sword dropped down. I think it was by grenade from Cometa. Not sure on that one, but definitely he will be out of the fight for quite a long time, maybe even killed. And uh, thanks to Lamaland having supply points just over here, very close, they are bringing more and more units. As you can see, right now, Team Kitten is pretty much out of units. New pikes have arrived, but this is just one pike unit left. Only heroes coming in to the main point. But this might be a very good tactic. Look at that. They utilized these units very well to the last second, and they are closing back right now with trebuchets and advances, not allowing Lamaland to come close to the point and they are just capturing the point so very heavily heavily brawling around using all the units to capture the attention of Lamaland and just moving back here with this point to the A side yeah, look at this it's so interesting Kitten says no units left just heroes but they seem to be able to body block just enough with that one shield unit of stars that they have and using the trebuchets on the right staircase slowing down Lamaland to get on the A point as they they get it um, we can see that both teams lost a lot of units. Um, Kittens lost almost 300-400 units, as Lama Land lost about 300. So both teams seem to have taken an equal beating um, as they look to go for the, one of their next supplies. And Kittens has to regroup and get new units. Um, as we just saw, the heroes on the point had no units at all, so they will take a minute or so. Uh, for them to get back to supplies and bring up their, their new units. Yeah, so actually Kitten, Team Kitten lost almost twice, right? 500 coming in, oh, yeah, unit yeah. casualties. So, yeah, so this might be this might be crucial for their further pushes. They also lost or used five trebuchets. And we will see what they will do right now, because this point is the usual stalemate kind of situation. You have a lot of distance to cover if you are attacker, right? This plus to this point is like 10 times the distance that the defenders can do here. Similar here from this plus, to move further close to the push, it's also a long distance. So they have 9 minutes left, we'll see how they will utilize it. But if defenders play it well, they can really deal a lot of damage to the, to the attackers. Attackers cannot resupply fast enough and they might have some problems, so we'll see what they will do. Seems like they wanted to go for the small gate and try to do something because they use the left plus. But right now, look at that. Everyone is running back to the same slot they wanted to go. What is interesting is that the gate is open. So maybe they will use this as a distraction or maybe they will go here as a separate thing. 
what is interesting as well from my perspective would be Lama Land having absolutely no one Ah, sorry. Yeah, there is Brave Hakan hiding over here. He was watching whole time from the top and looking at the Team Kitten, what they are planning to do, making the rotations, making all the cons. So no problem there. Lamaland knew everything, what they wanted to know. And Hakan can just jump down here if under pressure. Seems like he will be under pressure right now. Ah, but Hammer, he will be able to bring him. And let's see where he takes him. He will just drop him down. To the safety so brave hakan no lost life very much information gained so definitely on the plus side seems like team kitten are right now struggling to choose the side they will be pushing on they want from one side to other side uh, from the plus and then once more they went to the other stairs they are not sure what to do they are once more bringing a lot of pikes a lot of heavy push units only one damage unit i see yeah only one crick threat so definitely heavy brawling force moving into this stairs and seems like once again no planks no nothing just pure force cooperation and strain what can be crucial for them here is that pikes when they brace they brace upwards so when going down the stairs they are much less effective on the other end on the contrary llama land this can work towards them uh, on the plus for the for the positive side on them and the push is coming in yeah, we can see the range still dealing damage. It's been so effective in the last battle, especially Sikali and Militia, as the first pike advances are going down. She's trying to follow up. Yeah, and we have Armingers also here from the flank. If needed, can another pike unit coming in from the defenders. They are very nicely holding him the one spot. The defenders have chosen the spot because they were higher on the stairs, they moved back. They were the ones that chose the battlefield, and the battlefield seems to be playing to their advantage with a lot of Zikalian militia a lot of javelins and a lot of archers around covering and shooting from every direction you can see we have shooting Namkas from the left we have shooting arquebusers from the right we have imperial archers from the right they are just cleaning out everyone with the great balance of frontline units so shields and pikes and the back light damage dealers they were able to clean the attack pretty much empty without too much loss so we will look at the stats in a moment. Yeah, so because of some Lama Land, they all got almost the same unit kills again. They are at 900 units killed right now, and uh, Kitten says, oh sorry, 900 units killed from uh, from Kittens, and Lama Land only lost 400. So they are really expanding their leads as they uh, even chased up onto the walls to kill some of the heroes. And if we look at the units or the heroes that died, let's see, where are they? How many people had died already twice yeah we have ramses only on the kitten side and on the llama land we have marv yeah and Bedir. so if there's another unsuccessful attack and meanwhile look at this so, so samuel is uh, actually capping the the, the the final but uh, for sure that they will be on there to defend it in time because this this maybe give uh, kittens uh, a few more minutes to regroup regroup on the walls yeah, so we have missed that pretty much what happened. Samuel was the one player who jumped off from the stairs, he went behind, and then he moved to the cup. But quickly back to the game. Look at the left side of the map. Kittens is moving in through the small gate, and it looks like they're trying to outrotate uh, Lamaland on this one. They have to use different strategies, but I wonder if uh, Lamaland's bringing out their cap right now, as this might be very effective. So definitely, the Kalian militia will not be effective right now because there is much units who are spread across bigger amount of the ground and they are pushing to the plot seems that they are yeah they are late on the rotation similarly to what we i was late with the camera movement uh, lama land was a little bit late with the rotation so kitten they are on the point but seems that the fight will not be finished yet they are still fighting for the plus there are 10 more trebuchets left i'm very interested why lama land uh, why team kitten is using so uh, late with the trebuchets right Ten more left. You can see one is dropped here. Very nice placement. We'll clear a lot of the units here. Maybe they will be able to cap it thanks to this trebuchet. Uh, we can see short sword still blocking in the cap point, so it will not be easy task. And they are constantly under heavy fire from the archers. So the archer difference is making a, a good thing. Here we can see cut off guard the arquebusers without cover. Nicely cleaned, nicely reacted from Team Kitten. But still, CPCG, heavy armor blocking the cap point. 
And yeah, I think Kitten, they are trying their best to cap it, but it's very hard to do so. Yeah, it's taking them so long. Uh, team Lebanon just continues to interrupt the supply, and that way Team Kitten cannot get new units, which they desperately need, but they are losing more and more units, and you can see that they only have 439 left, 430. As Lamaland is moving in from the right side as well, and if they get this kill or this team fight, I think Kittens does not have enough units to come back from this. Yeah, I would say the supply point is not even crucial for the taking new units, units, units because they are not that much, mostly for healing, right? So, yeah, another trap is dropping in, but over here we can see that nice two players have moved to the cap point. They will try to cap, and they have uh, walls of Fenrir. Uh, Sons of Ferrin coverage. Unfortunately, this unit doesn't deal that much damage to the champions, but they killed one. If they will be able to kill Bedir very fast, uh, they could get some capture points more, but yeah. Lamaland had everything under control. They just rotated three minutes left. Four times, sorry, three times more units on Lamaland, and so definitely very hard thing to do. I think even if they want to do anything here. Two minutes, 50 seconds left still. Berserker trying his best, calling the trebuchet on everyone else. He's dead, but the trebuchet yeah, flies so long, will not be able to do anything. Yeah, they're trying so hard, and Team Kitten finally managed to get the right uh, supply. Um, but they do not really have enough units to perhaps begin another push, right? 250 versus 690. Um, this is going to be so hard. Um, we also see Ramses, he's died three times, he's out of the battle for good. So it's 14 to 15 players right now as we see Lama Land regrouping again on the left supply. And they are even pushing the right supply with their, their armies. Look at this. Yeah, this is it's a very good usage of the army, guess, right? The pinpoint on given, you know, not too many units here, not too many things to worry about. You can use their agility to the max. You can rotate from here to there, health where needed, and so on. So. 1 minute 50 seconds, last push coming in from Team Kitten, as you said, 14 people left alive, actually one more person died, so only 13 people are available, they are trying their best, but I don't think they will be even able to get out of the stairs. Not enough units left, that's pretty much the whole story, 160 units left, a lot of them dying here, we can see Pike Militia pu pushing, and pretty much that's, that's it, just, uh, just the heroes. So. Unless they would uh, be able to switch the the two light armor heroes to the dual blades and try to get behind and maybe do the, some some backup, I don't see another chance for the team kitten to be victorious on this attack. We can see more kills are flowing in right now. Three people are on three deaths from team kitten. They will not be able to spawn anymore. Four people, so. 50 seconds, only 10 or 11 players left. Not too much that can be done. And as said, the rotation for the backline is happening. They are bringing two people here, Berserker and Foyer. Unfortunately, Lama went out of that, and they have some units and some heroes on the on the point. We can see a very good duel of Lun Lunser with Foyer fighting. We have Hammer from Goat coming to help, and I'm thinking that Foyer will be dead. Right now, Lon Lon Sir taking the kill very nicely done, and they have the cup under the control, the whole map under the control. Last trebuchets flying in to take some more lives of units, but this is generally going to be end. As we can see, only three players left from Team Kitten, they are running around and staying, trying to survive. Yeah, great win. That was uh, that looked very convincing from Lamaland. Uh, they got surprised one time in the rotation, but other than that, very convincing defense from them. Smart use of their units. Looked like uh, Kittens was... Um, they were maybe too straightforward with their shields and pikes. Uh, it worked for them really well in the games that I saw from them before. Um, but in this one, it was just too straightforward, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And we can take a moment right now to take a look on the... Uh, statistics. So, on the Team Kitten side, we can see Berserker mode MVP with two hero kills, three deaths, three assists, 76 unit killed, and 147 capture points. So, definitely he was leading all the charges, and this is very clearly seen on the statistics. Other than that, key highlights would be the 75 killed and 70 on Avenger and Foyer. 
and we can see pretty much all of the team was quite uh, similar on average with the units killed. As said in the beginning during the pushes, pushes they bring a lot of um, uh, units which can survive long, you know, the brawler, the, the surviving units, but they didn't have enough units uh, damage dealers pretty much. And this is very clearly seen on the stats where you compare it to Lamaland, where we have Lon Lon Sor, 6 kills, 13 assists and 140 units kill. Sexy Kebab, 2010 and 120. And then Brave Hakan, 171 units kill. This is, I think, one of the biggest we have seen this tournament so far. Khan Deme as well, 166. Big, big numbers. I'm sure that this 170, 160 plate, I'm sure that they were either cavalry players or they were having some arquebusers or some Zikalian, these are some damage dealers. This is how you win the games, by balancing out the damage, the survivability, the movement speed, everything around. And it seems like over here, Lamaland was able to do it better. Yeah, they showed great patience, which we'll, we will see in the clips that we're going to show in a few minutes to you. In attacking, they really used uh, the ranged to such a great effect. And if we go to the post battle analysis, we can maybe see uh, how many uh, different fights that we, we got from them. Um, Team Lamaland was just really effectively at using the supply. We saw them also, even at the left supply, when Kittens finally got into the city, they just stepped on it and off again and made sure that uh, Kittens just couldn't get a foothold in the city. Uh, and uh, like you said during the Battle of General as well, they really utilized the stair stairs very effectively, um, showing that they know how this game works uh, with the pikes and, uh, and all those units. Um, mm -hmm. Also, very surprisingly that no units on Kittens has got uh, a player with uh, unit kills above 100, um, as uh, that we see that quite often in most games, but the unit difference was so big, it was 600 to 100 at the end in favor of Lamanant. Yep, so very well done. Okay, we are ready with the clips. Yeah, let's go. Let's get the first one. Hmm? Oh, wait, wait, I have to switch my stream and yes. Uh, one moment, please, because something seems to be bugged. A little bit. Uh... Okay. And like so. Okay. So yeah, let's go. This is the first attack on the wall. We can see the traps. They weren't that effective because so much of Kittens uh, was still at the staircase. And we can see uh, Team Kittens finally managed to push through to the left. And they still kept for the right shows uh, pointing at the staircase. This in the end allowed them enough time to get their heroes on the, on the, on the A point. But you can see how much time it takes and the range just continues to push in. Look at that, another Sicilian militia throw. Um, I think the burn damage was really big. And then other units and heroes can finish off. And you can see units keep, keep coming in from the supply, whereas the units from Team Kitten have to take such a long time to get back, as we see a hero there downstairs that died before. It's just taking too, too long for Team Kittens to resupply. Well, Lamaland continues to fire into all the units. And look at this, there's just one Star Wars unit left with, what is it, eight, ten heroes from Team Kittens. But they do manage to get on the point as more traps fly in. Um, maybe if Team Lamaland was even a bit quicker, they might have taken the eight point even back, right? Very impressive from them in the defense, but Team Kittens did manage to get the eight point there. Okay, moving to second. Yeah, this was really interesting for me. At first I was thinking, okay, with all the units that uh, Team Kittens has, they, they have to be able to push down, but they didn't really get up the staircase. Look how much range is flying in, and the uh, Sikali militia is being so effective. The Namkans, look at it, one, two units, three units of Namkans, and so much continued damage is coming into this battle. And after a while you can see the shields are down, there's just the pikes, and like you said, maybe two pikes is too many. Um, and you need to bring some range on those stairs to counter uh, the range from uh, from, from Lama Land. Um, right, you can see it. And yeah, after a while, it's just too much. That's a great victory on the defense for Lama Land again. Mm -hmm. Moving to the last clip. 
Yeah, this was after the rotation. Unfortunately, we missed to clip that one. But here we can see Team Kitten finally managing to get on the supply. But look at that. They just cannot capture it. It continues to keep getting inter intervened. And Lamaland fina finally managed to find the time to walk around and get from behind. And they just clear up everything that's there from Kittens. And if you look at the unit score, it's already dropping to 300, close to there. And this is not going to be enough. The traps continue to come in there and the traps on that supply are so effective or they can be very effective but in the end it wasn't enough and at the end of the clip we see another player standing on the the final as a distraction but was too little too late indeed so 